In June of 2024, Ukrainian hackers took over a Russian TV station to broadcast casualty numbers from the wall. And in the background, there were four rather innocent-looking ballerinas. Moreover, this is not the first time. Roughly one year before this, they showed a montage of the Ukrainian army, followed by this ballet once again, which is kind of odd. For reference in other instances, they've shown Russian war crimes, dead Russian soldiers and even Russian men torture chambers. So how in the world does a ballet fit into this? Well, to understand that, we must go back in time to the days of the Soviet Union when on November 10th, 1982, a pop concert was supposed to be broadcast live on Soviet state TV to celebrate police day. Instead, viewers were disappointed to tune into a ballet played on repeat for hours until finally it caught to the announcement that the Soviet leader, Leonid Brezhnev, who was really old and really sick, had died. The ballet had simply been a distraction while the government picked out a successor, who was another really sick and old man, so fast for 15 months, which was somehow better than the next guy who only lasted 13 months. But then it would be another six years until this ballet would once again be unexpectedly broadcast on Soviet state TV. Now, the leader at the time, Mikhail Gorbachev, was both young and healthy, and so many people who witnessed it have since expressed in interviews that seeing this ballet on TV, they knew instantly that something was up. Researching this video, I even found a few fairly recent social media posts of people remembering seeing this on TV as children, and being straight up scared, not knowing what was about to go down. Like, some of the ballerinas who starred in this specific iteration of the ballet would straight up receive harassment for years to come being labeled as collaborators. See, let's change it over and see what some of the Western channels were reporting. Tanks from the Soviet Army's armored personnel carriers on the streets of Moscow this morning. Tonight, tanks are still in position around the Kremlin, the new leaders installed inside. <laughs> It was the August coup of 1991 when communist hardliners tried to overthrow the reforming government that this ballet has become synonymous with. And so naturally, in June of 2023, when the chief of the Wagner private military company, Yevgeny Prigozhin, launches Hail Mary coup against Moscow, Russian social media was flooded with posts themed around this ballet. And heck, even on Google Trends, it shows that searches skyrocketed in Russia for this ballet, which I should probably mention is called Swan Lake and is in itself immensely popular. One version here on YouTube even sitting at over 55 million views. And interestingly, one of the top comments on that video with over 10,000 likes is from around the time of this Brigosian coup and reads, What's up boys? Did we all just get into the mood for some Russian ballet out of nowhere? <laughs> Okay, I'll admit it. So far, this video has been very trivial. Everything I've said to this point has essentially just been fun facts that aren't really that meaningful in the grand scheme of things. However, this Swan Lake Ballet is actually much more important than that. See, in an increasingly authoritarian Russia, where people are by now literally being arrested over private conversations, an increasingly popular method for venting your frustrations with the ruling regime has become to use these sort of common symbols as a form of coded protest statements, which is a role that this Swan Lake Ballet not only fits incredibly well, but where it also has some pretty cool benefits fits on the side, with for example Swan Lake themed graffiti being found to last much longer than other more overt types of anti-war street art, as city janitors who are typically speaking not the most knowledgeable people when it comes to political protest symbols, tend to just overlook these four seemingly innocent and irrelevant looking ballerinas. But of course, that's also just one example of Swan Lake being used as protest. There are many others. For example, in May of 2023, when the Freedom of Russia Legion made its first ever incursion into the Belgorod Oblast in Russia, one Russian commentator covered the news wearing a pretty nice t-shirt. Now, of course, by far the most famous example is in March of 2022, when the independent TV station TV Rain was taken off air. They decided to finish off their final broadcast like this. 
then of course, there's also the Russian feminist punk rock band Pussy Riot, which in 2023 released Swan Lake. A song which, I must be honest, is f awful. But that's besides the point. What matters is that it's a protest against the sheer amount of fascist nonsense currently being rammed down the throats of Russian schoolchildren and also against the abduction of Ukrainian children. And of course, these are just a few examples of Swan Lake themed protests. There are countless others, many even dating back before the Ukraine war. However, by far my favorite Russian protest of all time has got to be this man who nailed his own scrotum to the cobblestone of Red Square. Which, of course, has nothing whatsoever to do with Swan Lake. I just thought it was cool. But on the topic of cool things, there's another thing that Swan Lake is connected to, which to me, as a true Gen C Zuma, is almost sacred. Memes. Four adorable ballerinas locking their hands. What better way is there to mock your regime? Especially when they're a group of corrupt old degenerates who try to portray themselves as these macho defenders of traditional masculinity. This right here is the Russian musician Noise MS, who made by far the most impressive Swan Lake themed meme, an entire song in which just clowns on Count Vladimir's absurd regime, whilst the melody itself is a hip hop rock adaptation of Swan Lake, with the cherry on top of course being as you can see, the crowd dancing, holding hands like the four infamous ballerinas. Now of course what you're currently hearing in the background of this video is not that song, due to copyright reasons. Instead, this is a similar guitar adaptation by a guy called Ken Mukai, link in the description, as well as to this piano adaptation you've heard a few times. Anyway, by far the most interesting part of this song, however, is the title, with these two words for starters translating to Swan Lake. But more interestingly is this one, which says cooperative. See, this is a direct reference to the now infamous Oseda cooperative. The Russian word for lake is pronounced Oseda. Anyway, it takes us back to the 1990s when Count Vladimir and some of his homies had built themselves lucrative careers as corrupt politicians and decided to create this Oseda cooperative, essentially a closed community of luxurious summer villas or Dutchess with a shared bank account where they could put money they had stolen from the starving citizens they were supposed to be serving. And it became infamous as many of its members rose to become immensely rich and powerful alongside Count Vladimir as he climbed the political hierarchy. Which is part of a larger trend of Count Vladimir saying to hell with anyone who has actual knowledge or experience and instead promoting his own bodies to powerful and important positions. Notably, many of them being his former colleagues from his days in the KGB, you know, the Soviet Union's notorious CIA FBI hybrid on steroids, thereby creating a government filled with authoritarian wackos who have helped him turn Russia into a deplorable police state. Something which the Russian YouTuber Yekaterina Schulman mocks when she puts four riot policemen holding hands like the infamous ballerinas at the start of her videos. More specifically, it's meant to ridicule this message which Count Vladimir's government forces her to put at the start of her videos stating that she's a quote foreign agent and heck this combination of riot policemen with Swan Lake is actually a pretty common way of mocking Count Vladimir's KGB state and in this regard Swan Lake or rather the August coup of 1991 is almost poetic. The democratically elected president of Russia was soon striding out of the building to address a crowd of supporters. He climbed aboard one of the Red Army's own tanks and said the coup leaders had disgraced the Soviet Union. The Soviet Army retreats from Moscow. An old-fashioned coup fails. With the area near the Kremlin empty of troops, people gathered for a victory rally outside KGB headquarters. Now, most of you probably know who Iron Mike Tyson is and think he's pretty tough, but compared to this guy, Iron Felix Jasinski, Iron Mike honestly seems like a scrawny little schoolboy. See, ethnically Polish, there's a pretty dark Polish joke that goes something like this. Question, who's the greatest Pole to ever live? Felix Jasinski. <laughs> what? Why? No Pole ever killed more Russians. 
See, Jasinski became infamous as the chief of Vladimir Lenin's secret police force, the Czech, which not only executed between 50 and 200,000 people in just over four years, but did so viciously, be it by burning people alive or throwing them into tanks of boiling water or throwing regular water on naked prisoners in the middle of the Russian winter until they turned into statues of ice. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you want more details, feel free to pause, because what's most important here is the fact that Jasinski's check wound up laying the groundwork for a whole series of infamous police forces, the final iteration of which being Count Vladimir's beloved KGB. And for this legacy, Jasinski was honored with a massive statue in Moscow. And so as the August coup failed, Yeltsin's spokesman promised them a crane would be brought in to bring the monument to the ground. Now, it would of course be a pipe dream to imagine the Russian people in their current state rising up and overthrowing KGB Count Vladimir as he still enjoys very wide support. However, the Soviet Union was quite a large place and didn't just include Russia, but also a plethora of other countries, many of which not only want to see Count Vladimir removed, but which also got to witness Swan Lake playing on Soviet state TV back in 1991. And of course here I feel it's only right if we focus in on Ukraine, where in 2014 after Count Vladimir had seized Crimea and begun his shadow war in the Donbass region, the local government in Odessa organized organized the performance of Swan Lake at a military museum. And more interestingly, around the same time, another Ukrainian man realized that Count Vladimir had not been spotted in public for a few days. And so he set up this website, which to this day actually remains up, although it is by now defunct. However, I did find this very old screen recording, which shows that it used to display Swan Lake on repeat in the background, whilst in the front there was this timer, which was would just tick upwards, only resetting whenever Count Vladimir was spotted in public. The hope of course being that it would eventually just keep on ticking upwards, until finally it would one day be Russian state TV showing this belly. And to this end, something cool I found researching this video, especially for those of you who are perhaps a bit superstitious, is that on February 24th, 2022, the very day that Count Vladimir launched his idiotic war of conquest. In the Great Hall at the State Kremlin Palace, they were actually supposed to show Swan Lake, but it was cancelled last minute. Now, to be fair, this cancellation had nothing whatsoever to do with what's been discussed in this video, but it was instead because of a massive surge in COVID cases that happened around this time. But I still thought it was a pretty cool coincidence. Now, whether or not this idiotic decision to invade Ukraine is going to lead to Swan Lake being broadcast on Russian TV remains to be seen. But what is certain is the fact that in 1999, on Count Vladimir's own orders, a sex tape was broadcast on Russian state TV for the entire nation to see. So perhaps you should click on this video and learn something about that.